Aloha mai kako e na hoa maka maka mai kalahi ki a kalakau. Felina nui me ki aloha. My name is Kaibi Puni Kauika Vekiu Laip, and I will be the host of today's show, um, the Kuali'i Council series. This is the second installment of our series. Um, so just as a review, last, last month we talked a lot about um, the beginnings of Kuali'i Council and the beginnings of this idea of an indigenous serving institution and a Native Hawaiian place of learning. That's really become kind of a um, common terminology that's used throughout the campus now. And when we look at the, how that language came about and we look at who's been pushing that forward, one of the collective entities that's been doing that work for a long time is the Kuali'i Council. And so over the next several months, we'll be highlighting programs that have um, benefited from the advocacy work of Kuali'i Council, who have been partners in the work of Kuali'i Council to really help the University of Hawaii at Manoa become a Native Hawaiian place of learning. And so today, um, our show really focuses on folks who are doing work that specifically looks at Native Hawaiian student success on campus um, and really doing great work that has allowed the number of students at Manoa, to, Native Hawaiian students at Manoa, to be at its highest peak today, um, nearly 15% of the UH Manoa student population now being Native Hawaiian. So I think that's something that we really want to celebrate and talk about and learn more about together. So today we have Kinohi Gomes, director of Napuno Eao. Um, Aloha. Aloha, thank you for being here. And his work really focuses on K-12 education, looking at Native Hawaiian students in K-12 um, elementary through high school and their access to higher education. Exactly. Yep. And then we also have Dr. Willie Kowai, Director of Native Hawaiian Student Services here at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. And your focus being once they come through um, Kinohi's programs and through other programs and once they get to UH Manoa, um, supporting them so that they can reach all their higher education goals here at Manoa. Um, so we're really excited to have these two very important guests doing very important work in our community and in the, um, higher education as well. Um, so as a reminder to, to the two of you especially, last, last time we talked about um, the history of the formation of the Kuali'i Council. Um, I have a slide here that talks about the mission of Kuali'i Council. And the membership of Kuali'i Council in the past we have had both Native Hawaiian and non-Native Hawaiian members. Yep. Anybody that's um, committed to really empowering Native Hawaiians through higher education. And one document that we talked about was the Ka'u Report. Yeah. And so we talk about the Ka'u Report as kind of the seminal piece, right, in mm -hmm. higher education um, for Native Hawaiians at UH Manoa and across the UH system. Um, and the, the primary question of the Ka'u Report was, where are the Hawaiians? Because in 1986, when the report was written, um, the Native Hawaiian student body across the system comprised only about 5% of the total student population. There's a, a slide of the title page of the Ka'u Report. Um, mm. Right, kind of the, the guiding um, essence of that report. When we look at Ka'u, and we look at the timeline of Ka'u 1986, and then Napuna Eao starts right kind of yeah, after yeah. that, Eight right? After that, yeah. And so when we think about then even, you know, who is um, on the task force of the Ka'u Report, um, Dr. David Singh, Correct. who is the founding director of Napuno Ea, was also on the task force, and I have a list of the task force members. Um, so I was wondering, Kinohi, if you'd be willing to talk a little bit about kind of the genealogy of how all these pieces are connected for Napuno Ea. Yeah, so like you shared with the Ka'u report, um, it really set precedence for, um, for action as far as student services goes for Native Hawaiians. Mm -hmm. and. Throughout the whole state, what's happening at around this time in the late 80s, um, early 90s, people are looking at this uh, very closely and taking the kuleana pretty uh, seriously. So uh, with Uncle David, as we all know him, um, he took it on uh, from an educational standpoint in his uh, capacity at that time um, to start up a number of initiatives. One of the big ones, which start up right, right, at, right after the uh, write-up of the Ka'u report uh, was Napuno Eo. Mm -hmm. uh, it started... In 1989, with the first uh, program launching in 1990, um, so his work, his beginnings of his work um, started, um, which contributed to the Ku'u report um, as, as a concern, um, and he actually approached the model of evening, evening the playing field for Native Hawaiian students uh, K through 12 um, by providing them direct access to higher education. Mm -hmm. And it kind of got shut down at first um, at, the, at the DOE level, which is why he just took it and housed it at the um, at the University of Hawaii at Hilo at the time. Mm -hmm. it, had, it had had its very humble beginnings there. Um, 
And the center at that time was um, opened up at the attic of the theater <laughs> uh, when, the, when the program had first started. Um, and he launched um, his first enrichment program in 1990 and um, saw that there was a need uh, for Native Hawaiian students to um, get this access. So, so at the dorms of the old, I mean, at the, at the doors of the old gymnasium, there were hundreds and hundreds of kids and families, with, to his surprise, that wanted to be a part of this opportunity, wow. specifically in Hilo. And then what had happened um, throughout the genealogy of the program, um, he did from half these super enrichment events, he did um, more intense programs, which is called the Summer Institutes, two-week residential programs, uh, which had its humble beginnings at Hilo, um, and then it, it branched off to the other sites. Um, but what was happening was the kids were coming from all the neighbor islands, going back home and say, you know what, we're having an awesome time, we're having all of these experiences um, directly with the community and the college. And that begins the launching of Napuno El Centers on all of the other sites. Oh, awesome. um, beginning at Kauai, then Moloka'i, O'ahu, and so forth, um, opens their Napuno El sites. I have a um, slide here that shows a, a, a little bit of that, that map, yeah, that we can. <clears throat> yep, so yeah. that's where we are. So now we're um, throughout the state uh, with some updates on where the centers are at a little bit later in this conversation, but mm -hmm. that's primarily why and how um, Napuno El um, got opened here at UH Manoa. Okay, that makes so much sense. And so, and I hear a lot of parent advocacy and even student, student leadership saying this is what we want, which I think is um, such a beautiful way for programs to come about, not from some, someone sitting in a corner thinking about what might work, but people, the real people saying this is helpful, this is working, we want more of this which I think is yeah, such a great model <laughs> yeah, as yeah. we um, move forward. Um, what are some of the strategies that you folks have used to serve Native Hawaiian students? So once all these programs, because you do all kind of stuff. Yeah, it's not yeah. like a, only a one pathway to supporting Native Hawaiian students. Yeah, that's a really good question um, because we provide a whole array of opportunities. Um, Uncle David um, calls the, 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 the foundational programs his throw net approach okay. uh, to programs, which is um, our Super Enrichment Saturday half day events, which were created to just get our Native Hawaiian students interested about learning based mm -hmm. upon the opportunities and the curriculum um, that's being offered. And all of the, when you look at the genealogy of all of the programs that we offer, a lot of it actually came through the parents and came through the students that nice. we want this, we want that, we want this. Um, we also have Ohana Day events, which were created because families said that we want to be able to uh, learn alongside with our children so that once they leave the center, mm -hmm. we can kind of carry out those conversations. Absolutely. You know, in the home environment and support our children with their goals, you know. I have some great pictures of babies and parents working together here on this Yeah, slide. that's our Ohana Day yeah. event on um, one of our last ones that we held here at UH Manoa. Um, that was held at specifically at Kamakako Kalani okay. uh, at Center for Hawaiian Studies in the Halau at the low E and then in one of the lecture rooms. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, with all of the programs that we, we provide from the most beginning to the most advanced, like our summer institute, um, mm -hmm. two week residential program, it's really created to, to expose um, and get students comfortable and ma'a about being at the university campus from a young age, which is why we, we um, have a number of our programs here on campus mm -hmm. um, and in collaboration and in partnership. Um, and it's a, it's a flavor that exists at all of our centers yeah. based upon what, um, what's available at each of the communities, what the needs are um, from each of the communities. Right. And we really make those opportunities happen as such. Yeah, I have here a picture of um, some young men working together. Um, this, this looks like one of the um, events. That's, yeah, that's our Summer Institute program. Okay. It's our two-week um, residential program. That was this past summer. We offered a number of classes. The pictures that are being shown now are from our Kalai class, our carving class. Oh, okay. And um, what was really cool about that is they, they looked at the art of carving um, as a practice of, mm. of, um, of our people, mm -hmm. but really took that in the educational model as far as, what does that mean as far as research goals? Mm -hmm. What does that mean as far as the conservation and preservation of, of our mo'olelo and our history? Mm -hmm. and, and that's how the pieces were kind of created. Nice. Um, and what's also cool is we've been here, we're going on 26 years now. Oh, wow. Um, now we're finding and that one of the photos, one of the students, um, actually a couple of the students in that photo <laughs> that was just shown, they were um, graduates from the Pono Il. And now we're seeing that they're coming back and they're saying, how can we kokua or mm -hmm. how can we give back? And we're finding that now they're becoming the mentors and the teachers yeah. um, of our program. So yeah, we're really, 
I think, blessed and, and, and um, fortunate to provide a service that's needed. And I think the payback is we get students who are thriving, doing my kai things, yeah. being my kai people, yeah. and then coming back and, and serving. And, you know, you really make a good point, this idea of that. I think what I've always seen in Apuno Eau, um, whether it's close up or kind of standing back and watching, is this idea of kaiku ana kai kind of relationships. Yeah, that like you actually foster in the program, which is exactly what you're talking about, yeah. right? So these babies, you guys mentor them, and then they get bigger, and then they come back, and then they mentor the next generation. Exactly, and which, it's it's part of our core values of our center. Um, we really, really embrace the concept of ohana, mm -hmm. so we treat our children. Our students, yeah, I even said children. Mm -hmm. We treat our students as if they're our own. Um, Absolutely. And you know, we have that expectation as as the makua or the kuana um, of the organization that no matter what walks of life they come back. You know, we get some kids that come from really rough backgrounds, yeah. the educational backgrounds from public school, homeschool, private school. No matter what walks of life um, these children come from and families come from, when they step through the doors of Mapua no Eo, we have that expectation in them that they will succeed. Mm -hmm. They'll do great things. And just that alone um, provides a sense of empowerment, you know, for our students yeah. so that once they become older and they filter through our programs and they, and they achieve their goals, they do that the same for the next Absolutely. generation. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And it's been become part of their being that it would be natural to yeah. do. Um, I remember you mentioned just a couple minutes ago this idea of um, creating programs that are specific to community, specific to place. And so um, I have here a slide. Um, of folks, and I think you're in a very specific community. Can you talk a little bit about this program in yeah, particular? Yeah, this was our, another one of our summer institute programs. It was called our Malama Kanaloa class, mm -hmm. which is so cool that we can infuse Absolutely. Kanaloa. Absolutely. You know, into higher education yeah. and, and into the education of our students. Yeah. And this class was really um, my cut in a sense that it combined traditional and Western knowledge into one inclusive yeah. world for our students. Mm -hmm. So we had um, one of our UH um, science students was the Kumu, um, and what she did was provide students basically information on what it is to be a scientist mm -hmm. in different Hawaiian um, environments and, nice. and um, uh, locations. So that partic those particular photos were at Heia Fish Pond mm -hmm. where they kind of learned about the history of, of the fish pond, but they also did um, research on the spawning of around the time that was going yeah. around at that time with the jellyfish um, and, the, <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the, life, the life that was going on at Makai. Mm -hmm. And then part of our organization too is that you don't just go to any place and you take what, 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 what the place has to give you yeah. as far as ike or even physical mail mm -hmm. if you need to collect. Mm -hmm. But um, we also are very vigilant about, you know, um, returning service, yeah, doing yeah. community service and giving back. So. In those photos, the students were um, grabbing, I guess the old, the the, the limo, that, the limo, yeah, the invasive, the invasive limo, invasive limo mm -hmm. which they use for um, cultivation and even to eat. But um, yeah, it's 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 really a, a complete cycle. It's a collaboration. It's a partnership, in in really making um, these opportunities um, successful for for students. Yeah. And then this last slide I have. Um, Looks like they're not in the ocean anymore. No, yeah, this is. And a, so it's a different program. Yeah. So with Napua no Eo, we attack all kinds of themes, from engineering yeah. to architecture to um, science to carving to music to acting. The, those, those particular photos is from our Kiolamo uh, program that we had. We had a federal grant, which looked at um, uh, medical pathways for Native Hawaiian okay. students. Um, about six years ago, a group of us from Jabsom, um, Nalani uh, from School of Nursing, we all kind of got together kind of casually in conversation. And on our end, um, in the beginnings of our program, we provided medicine um, as a pathway for our students. And we kind of slowly weaned off because we saw that the, uh, when, the, when the opportunities uh, created, that the the numbers of students who go into those pathways mm -hmm. also increases. So mm -hmm. we were comfortable that our students were pursuing medicine nice. and nursing and whatnot. But in this conversation, we are kind of brought back to alarm that the numbers are going back down. Oh, OK. So that's why they call and say, Kid Napuno, you, know, you guys got to do something on the front end and bring you know, these opportunities back for the kids. And that's exactly what we did. Mm -hmm. 
through partnership mm -hmm. and through collaboration, um, expose students to all of the different um, venues that there are in, in, in um, related to medicine, from traditional mm -hmm. all the way to Western. So students got to see the full gamut of, of what's, what's out there, you know, mm -hmm. as far as employment and education. Awesome. Yeah, and it was a big, huge partner partnership with, here on Oahu with a number of people from um, the different components of the university, from nursing, mm -hmm. social work, uh, school of medicine, um, school of pharmacy from Hilo and so forth. Yeah. yeah. Well, and we're actually really lucky to have all those, that very diverse group of departments exactly. in Hawaii. For and us Hawaiians to, in them. Absolutely, mentors, yeah, and, yeah. And really amazing mentors and yeah. physicians and social workers to learn from in both practice and in the research side. So yeah. awesome. Which I think brings us to the next question. You know, so you guys are doing all this kind of stuff. Where, where is Napua no Yao today? You know, what are some of the um, the successes that you guys talk about? Um, well, some of the quick facts that, um, you know, that we shared is, you know, Uncle David had this really innate intuition, Ike, mm -hmm. Vanana, whatever you want to call it at the time, in the early 90s, late 80s, that if you create the venue, the product, or if you invest, and it's kind of almost very Hawaii, yeah, if you mm -hmm. take the time to malama a particular acre of land that's completely bare naked, and you, and you take care of that for a period of time, you'll get stuff from it. Absolutely. Yeah, and he kind of tied that to whatever the opportunity was for our kids, you know, mm -hmm. as far as making um, pathways related to STEM or mm -hmm. pathways related to medicine or pathways related to whatever uh, whatever category or need, um, yeah. it, you know, from our communities and from our students. And, you know, by fostering that for so much time, we find on the other end that students actually pursue that. Yeah. You know, when you create a venue in science <laughs> or medicine, they'll become scientists and doctors. Mm -hmm. If you create a venue in uh, engineering or STEM, they become engineers. Yeah. So some of the data that we have that we collected um, from last year, uh, spring of 2015. And actually I have a slide about this. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, that there was a total of 1,369 Apuno alumni enrolled at the university throughout the system, which represents 11% of the total Native Hawaiian population. That's awesome. Yeah, out of that, 372 um, graduated from spring mm -hmm. uh, from UH's campuses throughout the state. So that's 12.6 of the Native Hawaiian um, population and this is the part that's really cool that yeah. I just talked about is yeah, that exactly 42 of them were STEM majors 57 um, health majors and then from that as you as we break down the numbers a little bit more 191 uh, from the community colleges and their two-year certifications mm -hmm. um, 136 bachelor's degrees in the Puno L students mm -hmm. 25 masters and seven post bacs and PhDs that's awesome. former Napuno L uh, um, students yeah. so I think we're doing something, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and, and making opportunities happen, um, really teaching our children children to give back to the community and really growing up to be Maika'i people, to serve, mm -hmm. serve our people, serve our communities, and ultimately the world. Yeah. No, yeah. and I you know, I think we all bump into them, and I'm like, oh, you're in the Puno Eo, baby. <laughs> you know how to act. You must be in the Puno Eo, baby, you know? Yeah, um, we train we, them young. Yeah, I know. And I remember being a little girl and going, it was like, the Puno Eo was like this amazing thing. How did you get into the Puno Eo? You know, I'd have classmates and stuff yeah, yeah. Um, who would do these, like, awesome things, like some of the programs you're talking about. And now, actually, my own Kiki have participated in some of the, um, the programs for the little ones. So, um I think exactly what you said about this idea of if you malama something, you know, something good is going to yeah. come out of that. Yeah, yeah, that's not time wasted or resources wasted for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, mahalo nui. Um, yeah. You know, and I think when we talk about then, okay, what are they doing? They're coming to college and they're not just coming to college, but they're graduating from college and they're going back into community. So a great segue to talk about the work of Native Hawaiian Student Services um, here at Manoa, right? So not all the Puno Yao kids will come to Manoa, but many of them will. Yeah. And the biggest number of Native Hawaiians from Napuno Yao and elsewhere come to Manoa. Yeah, I mean, eventually. I don't know about Kuele, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And so we have this really, really important relationship of of creating this bridge, right? Where we're not we're not going to drop you no. once you once you ex exit Napuno Yao, but we hand you right over to Willie folks. Yep. Um, and so you know that's I think a really exciting thing that we see. And you know, just as a little historical overview, when we think about Native Hawaiian student services. Um, many, many years ago in Kuali Council, we were seeing that Native Hawaiian support programs, Native Hawaiian student support programs were developing 
for example, in the School of Medicine, in the School of Nursing, right, in law school, um, in the College of Education, in engineering, and all these little Native Hawaiian support programs were popping up, doing incredible work, just yeah. as you are on the K-12 side. Um, but we didn't have kind of a central place, a central unit to help coordinate what folks were doing across the campus and saying, hey, how do I support you? And how do we you know, collaborate on efforts? Because everybody was just so focused on trying to you know, make their program survive and find the funding and, you know, really just focusing inwards. And that's when Kuali'i Council advocated for the Native Hawaiian Student Services Directorship to begin that kind of office, right? And so, um, you know, I want to recognize that the first, the inaugural director of um, Native Hawaiian Student Services is Dr. Kahuna Vai Wright. Uh, we have a picture of her there. And um, she's now moved on to become an assistant professor in the College of Education, Education Administration. I think that's really exciting because she came from the practice of doing what she's now teaching about and is gonna grow a whole other generation yeah. of student services professionals and leaders. So um, as we talk about the history of that, um, Willie, I'm wondering if you can talk to us a little bit about you know, what has Native Hawaiian Student Services become today? Um, you know, where does it sit organizationally? What is its mission? Some of the services perhaps and i actually have a slide here of your home page that folks um, might see as familiar but if you could tell us what's going on now well thank you um <clears throat> so native Hawaiian student services is is i think at its core born out of um i think the need to address some of the disparities that we see when mm -hmm. it comes to native hawaiians um, um and uh, and access to hawaii's only research one institution yeah. Uh, traditionally, uh, those numbers of Native Hawaiians um, being accepted and, and, and succeeding at UH Manoa has, mm -hmm. hasn't been all that great. Right. When you think about how long the university has been um, alive and open mm -hmm. uh, for business for, for more than 100 years, mm -hmm. uh, to think that I mean, Native Hawaiians still only compose roughly 15% of the overall population here at, yeah. at Manoa, um, it tells us that there's some institutional barriers that need to be addressed. Absolutely. Um, um, and so I think Native Hawaiian Student Services, when it was created um, around 2000, to the 2000 or 2008, was really, was really intended to address that. Yeah. Um, Native Hawaiian Student Services um, comes into inception uh, in and around the same time as um, the birth of Hawaii Nui Akea, mm -hmm. um, the School of Hawaiian Knowledge, mm -hmm. UH Manoa's uh, uh, newest uh, college. Uh, within that college, um, there is Hawaiian Studies, yeah. uh, there's Hawaiian Language, there's Kapapalo'i or Kanewai, and then there's Native Hawaiian Student Services. Those four units uh, make up uh, the overall composition of, of our college. Mm -hmm. um, our mission is, is somewhat simple, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, it's to provide academic and uh, student services to our majors within Hawaii Nui mm -hmm. so uh, um, Hawaiian language majors as well as Hawaiian studies majors. Um, but it's also to provide student support to all 3,000 Native Hawaiians, right. uh, regardless of what um, college or uh, <coughs> major they're in. Yeah. Um, we, um, although I said, Although I said that 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 particular mission might be simple, um, um, it does take a lot of hard work when it comes to yeah. um, implementing that mission. Right. Um, so collaborations with with other student services units on campus, such as Napua no Eau, um, with Kinohi, uh, Kua Ana with Antiku Me Aloha, mm -hmm. NH Semp with Josh Kaokua, so yeah. on and so forth. Uh, very important for us to push that that mission mm -hmm. forward. Um, as far as the, the, the services that we provide, mm -hmm. um, um, they go from simple lounge areas. We have uh, two lounge areas for students. Uh, these, these lounges aren't just for Native Hawaiian students, but they're, they're open for, for all students at, yeah. at UH Manoa. Um, we have two lounges, one in uh, the main student services building, mm -hmm. Queen Little Kalani Center for Student Services, and another in um, Kamaku Kokalani um, um, Hawaiian Studies Building. Mm -hmm. um, in those lounge spaces, um, students have have space to study. They have access to computers, um, access to printing. 
um, but also um, counseling as well too. Yeah, um, really from important. From academic, absolutely. Mm -hmm. From academic, but also to to personal as well too. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Along with with those kind of, I think, basic but important um, student services, we also provide workshops on a whole gamut of, of things, including financial aid, mm -hmm. um, um, career services, um, internships, um, tax information. Um, I think if, if, a, if there's a student need for it or a student interest in it, yeah. I think over the past six to seven, eight years of Native Hawaiian Student Services being open, we've, we've, we've tried to meet those needs in one way or another. Um, Along with, along with, I think teaming up with the student services um, side of the house, mm -hmm. um, we also um, are, are involved with um, 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 helping or facilitating um, academic services within particular colleges that have high concentrations of Native Hawaiians, mm -hmm. such as the College of Social Sciences. I can probably talk about that a little bit later, but as far as as far as um, our mission, um, basic mission is, is to provide financial and academic uh, support to our majors, but then also to uh, the 3,000 Native Hawaiians that attend here. Right. Um, it's a very, I think, important time for these kinds of services to be around. Um, like I said, um, in a manner to address some of the, some of the disparities that have come about um, and some of the institutional barriers that that definitely need to be addressed right. here at UH Manoa. And I love the um, I love the framing about <coughs> you know the work that we that we do is about helping the institution transform. Not that our kids are brilliant, yeah. And I think that's what Napuno Al. I mean, that the term itself Napuno Al um, celebrates, yeah. yep. right? Mm -hmm. That we Native Hawaiian children are brilliant. They're born that way, you know. And how do we as Makua and Ohana and institutions? channel that brilliance exactly. and allow them to really develop into the amazing people that they're meant to be. So I and, love that framing. And we're talking about a people that, you know I mean, that figured out how to, how to sustain themselves here for, for 2,000 for years. Yep. Yep. And so I think that there's still that, that institute or that, that the genetic memory, right, that ancestral memory that um, is definitely still amongst many of our families mm -hmm. and many of our students. Drawing them into the university is, is, is definitely one way of enhancing that, Absolutely. Um, helping them to succeed, mm -hmm. but also helping UH Manoa to succeed and Hawaii more general. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. I yeah. think that's, that's the importance of that, right? right. Is, is that that brain power still exists mm -hmm. in our communities and drawing them to the University of Hawaii Manoa is only going to enhance that. Absolutely. Exactly. And that's how we know we're doing a good job when our community is healthy. That's, that's why I'm in education. I think that's why you are in education, right? It's because we see this as a pathway to really allow our communities to thrive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, mahalo for that. Um, you know, Kinohi mentioned um, that a lot of the programming that he's been able to get funded has been, um, has been a struggle, right? Has been through federal grants, has not been, you know, something that just pours down from the sky naturally. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah maybe, maybe we won't say it never, but as of yet. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how Native Hawaiian Student Services is currently funded? For the most part, Native Hawaiian Student Services has been primarily grant funded. Okay. When I say grant funded, um, U.S. Department of Education, Title III grants, um, Alaska Native, Native Hawaiian Strengthening Institution grants. Mm -hmm. um, since its very inception, um, I think the first principal investigator to, uh, to write for and implement a grant was Kunia Freitas, mm -hmm. um, who is an assistant specialist at Hawaiian Studies. Um, um, after that grant had, had run out, um, Kahuna Wai Wright, the, the former director, um, had written for um, herself along with Nalani Bolutsky, had written for um, and received uh, three grants, yeah. um, which totaled roughly around eight to nine million dollars. Now tell me, before we're going to talk about grants because they do some yeah. They've written some really amazing programs into those grants to get funded. But why are grants necessary at this point? Yeah, without, without writing for those grants, um, the, the programming, the services that we provide to um, our majors, but also the 3,000 Native Hawaiian students wouldn't be possible. Okay. 
Um, just to give you, I think, some context mm -hmm. of, of how much we rely upon federal funding. Yeah. Um, our, our institutional monies, the hard funded monies that mm -hmm. we, grit, uh, we got uh, this year, um, only totaled to about $15,000, okay. which is, which would leave us somewhere around $5 per student or even less than $5 per student. Right, actually I have um, a little slide of that, that kind of, um, which is kind of an alarming number, right? And it's something we have to think about, you know, because I think people naturally think, well, if you're in the university, then you get plenty of money, right? But, um, but that's not always the case, yeah. yeah. And so you're saying that the operating budget for Native Hawaiian Student Services is about 15000 Yes, Okay. Yeah. And, and so, so that and would be not doing very much throughout the year. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, so it's an indication of how, how much we, we rely upon grant writers. Right. Even though we don't have a grant writer on our team. Yeah. Um, you all, become, you transform you become, to you become the grant writers. That. That's right, <laughs> yeah. that's right. Um, but I think this is a, an important point to make when, mm -hmm. we, when, when we see the university's kind of vision um, in turning this place into a Hawaiian serving institution. Yeah. Um, in, in seeing the, the various kind of working committees, the working groups mm -hmm. um, that are out there to help the university become a Hawaiian serving institution. Um, this could definitely be seen as an alarming number. Mm -hmm. um, um, but I will say that, that when, I, when I stepped onto this campus in 2001 as a transfer student from Kopiolani Community College, um, there was none of these services around, yeah. right? These, these didn't exist. Mm -hmm. um, even the different conversations that you can have with different administrators today, um, I think the amount of faculty that we have on mm -hmm. campus today, um, there's a lot changing. Absolutely. And so it's kind of exciting times to Absolutely. be to be in these programs, to be a part of this this kind of change that I think is is currently admits that, mm -hmm. <clears throat> is currently with us. So tell us then, um, with the help of funding of grant funding, can you tell us about some of the programs that have been born out of the grants that have been written? Yeah, so um, when Native Hawaiian Student Services first opens up, um, I think one of the, the inaugural uh, grants that's written, um, co-authored by Kuhunawai Wright and Alani Balutsky uh, mm -hmm. was the Hulili grant. Okay. That grant, the specific purpose of that grant was to provide um, an educational pipeline mm -hmm. from Windward Community College into UH Manoa. Okay. Um, Windward Community College has a very high concentration of Native Hawaiians. Mm -hmm. And so the idea behind that was, what if we created um, um, a student services program that would help yeah. um, bring this high concentration of Native Hawaiians at a community college and bring them into Absolutely. a research one institution, being which, UH Manoa. Which is really important because we know that many of our Native Hawaiians come through transfers, right? Absolutely. They are, they are yeah. community college transfers. Yeah. And we know, and people might say, well, why, why would you need a transfer program? But we know that when we're community college, it's very different from UH Manoa. The people are different, the environment is different, the parking is different, mm -hmm. right? So it makes so much sense. Yeah. yeah, one of the, one of the, I think the centerpieces mm -hmm. to that um, Hulili grant, uh, which was for about five years, mm -hmm. was the Hulili Bridge Program, mm -hmm. which um, provided um, community college transfers a six-week um, exper experiential, um, a six-week experience at, at UH Manoa. Mm -hmm. um, the Summer Bridge um, Institute uh, would take place during one of the, the summer sessions. Yeah. Um, uh, these students from the community colleges would, would come um, and reside in the dorms here. Mm -hmm. uh, they would experience um, campus life yeah. at a time when um, the campus is kind of hibernating, at a mm -hmm. time when the campus is kind of, right. um, it's not the circus that it is yeah, in the yeah. first day of school. Slow in transition, fall. Slow a transition. gentle transition, yeah. Um, what also took place uh, during that time too was um, a summer class. Mm -hmm. So these students would also be able to earn um, uh, a credit here at UH Manoa yeah. during this, this residential program. Um, so we would offer English 100 classes, mm -hmm. Hawaiian Studies 107 courses, um, Hawaiian Language courses, um, a whole different kind of um, um, assortment of classes that these students had um, the ability to take. Um, and this was a very, very, I think, important 
uh, breakthrough, I think, for Native Hawaiian Student yeah. Services was was running these bridge programs mm -hmm. um, because it it lessened the the fear that's usually associated with Native Hawaiians and coming to UH Manoa, a fear that I experienced mm -hmm. um, walking onto this campus in my first day, um, and I think it really gives um, students um, um, a very firm understanding that they can not only come here, but they can succeed. Absolutely. Um, and there's a number of, of people that surround them mm -hmm. um, that, are, that are dedicated to helping them make sure they succeed. Yeah. It's such an important point because I think a lot of times still, so many of our Native Hawaiian students who are coming to either the community colleges or to the four-year campuses, they are first-generation college students, mm -hmm. right? Nobody else in their family has been to college. And so that's a very foreign experience, right? Coming, even for the families, you know, trusting, should my babies come to this strange place that I don't know the people mm -hmm. there? Um, I think all of that is so important. It's the same kind of model that we hear about in the Pono Ale, right? And, and your folks' work, to bring folks here and make them feel comfortable in an Ohana style, knowing mm -hmm. that you have, you have people to come and, you know, that are going to take care of you. Um, it, 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 it makes so much natural sense, yeah. Awesome. You have other grants? Yeah. Um, so along with the Hulili um, um, grant that had that had expired right right around the time when I came on board, mm -hmm. I've I've been with Native Hawaiian Student Services for the past about year now. Okay. Um, um, so the other two grants that were um, that were waiting for me at Native Hawaiian Student <laughs> Services because of the hard work of Kahunawai Wright and Nalani Balutski, um, one of them was a renovation grant. That's right. Um, <clears throat> a renovation grant. Um, Basically, um, it's about a $3.5 million grant um, that was, that was uh, written for in order to provide or in order to, to renovate existing buildings mm -hmm. at UH Manoa campus that service high concentrations of Native Hawaiians. Nice. Um, so we're, we're currently um, implementing that grant right now. Mm -hmm. um, we're about to break ground um, at Hawaiian Studies at Kamako Kuokalani. Um, um, where we will be um, renovating um, um, Kumu Maile Andrade's um, uh, lab space and, and April Drexel's lab space. The art, the art, the, the art. sent the heart of ha Hawaiian art. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah, it's amazing what they do there. Absolutely, and that's yeah. that's kind of a space that that we prioritized and, and said, hey, this awesome. is this is a place that needs to be renovated. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think it was originally built to be an art section. No. Yeah, that was actually just student space originally in the original plans. And it's become this place where amazing young artists come out and get to learn with them and also um, guest artists from around the world. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, That's exciting. Um, so there'll, be, there'll be about three or four other renovation okay. projects that, that we'll be able to, um, to implement um, throughout the, the course of this, this five year renovation grant. Mm -hmm. uh, the, other, the other grant that we're currently administering right now uh, is titled Ea Manoa. That's right. um, here is Manoa. Mm -hmm. um, this grant is, I think at its core, at its essence, is aimed at helping the university become a Hawaiian serving institution, mm -hmm. particularly by um, Native Hawaiian Student Services working with uh, other existing student services units on campus, mm -hmm. such as Nopua no Eau, such as Kua'ana, but also such as um, uh, units such as admissions, right? Right, the admissions office, um, looking at, at how can Native Hawaiian Student Services um, help the admissions office um, better serve Native Hawaiians, absolutely, and also vice versa as well too. Um, this partnership, I, I think, is not just one way. Mm -hmm. We gain, I mean, we gain a lot of valuable information um, and, and and knowledge and experience from. Our collaborations mm -hmm. with admissions, but also other student services units. Um, the AMNOA grant um, is not just limited to uh, student services partnerships and collaborations, mm -hmm. but like I had mentioned earlier, um, uh, we also partner with um, <coughs> the academic units as well too. That's right. So written into that particular grant was a partnership with the College of Social Sciences. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a college that, that has, I think, the, her, the third most highest concentration of Native Hawaiians um, in any other college. I mm -hmm. think the number is close to 250. Wow. So we've um, teamed up with the Hawaiian faculty mm -hmm. throughout the College of Social Sciences um, in trying to figure out what kind of programming can we put together um, 
to better um, service and provide support to the 250 Native Hawaiian um, um, students that are in that, that college. Mm -hmm. One, I think, kind of exciting um, program that's come out of this partnership is um, a research assistant mentorship program, nice. which basically pairs a Hawaiian faculty member in the College of Social Science Sciences with um, a student mm -hmm. in the College of Social Sciences. An undergraduate student. An undergraduate student. Awesome. Those two together work on a research project. Mm -hmm. nice. right? So um, here we have this kind of kuaana kaikaina <laughs> relationship <Absolutely>. taking place <laughs> um, where the professor is, is, is very excited about something like this because they have um, somebody to help them with their research, mm -hmm. maybe with a book that they're trying to publish or an article that they're trying to publish. And then vice versa, right? That relationship is reciprocal in the sense of this undergraduate student gets to learn almost firsthand mm -hmm. from Hawaiian faculty about Hawaiian research, right? About, about the publishing process. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think from this, this particular partnership, um, um, I think we're starting to see a lot of good um, developments, right? A lot of good ideas coming out of this. But like you said, I mean, these are all, these are, these are grant funded. These yeah. are soft monies, right? right. Um, and so it's, um, it's very important that, 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 we, that we show the good work, right? That's, that's being able to, to come out of this mm -hmm. so that hopefully one day, you know what I mean? These, these types of programs can be hard funded, can be right. institutionally funded. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, yeah, this idea that, you know, oh, it wasn't just some lucky batch of kids who happened to be in school in this time period because that was when the grant existed, right? But that, you know, we can expect these kinds of things to be long-term institutionalized, right? That's mm -hmm. really the goal so that no matter what year it is, there are a certain number of research opportunities in the social sciences, right? That would be, that would be the ultimate yep. goal, mm -hmm. you know, the very um, easily planned out. It's part of line item budget, yep. right? that gets funded. And it's so important. I mean, all of the initiatives you're talking about, they're so important. When you think about, I was just speaking with some folks earlier today about how important it is for young undergraduates to get research experience. And in a lot of places, they don't, yeah. right? And then you have to wait until you're in graduate school. But what we see is students who do get really good experiences in research from an early time, they're so much more successful so much earlier. You know, they can get involved in things in such a, in a you know, more in-depth way mm -hmm. early on, mm -hmm. yeah, which really preps you so well for grad school, as we Absolutely. all know. So, um, you know, you, you're talking about this idea of partnerships, especially with A.M. Manoa, and the two of you, Napuno Eao and um, Native Hawaiian Student Services, is actually partnering. And so I was wondering if you could maybe talk a little bit about what that looks like, because I think it's a great model, but it's also exciting as we think about, you know, as the community who's watching this um, can start to think about, well, what does that look like? What does that mean for us as, as students or as prospective students, perhaps? Well, I, I think one thing before I kind of talk about that, that uh, a point that was kind of coming up that we that we didn't throw at the table was I think for all of these long time serving programs um, geared for Native Hawaiians in higher education and the prep of them and going into that route is that we're, I think, doing our best in not only presenting awareness, but presenting best practices. Absolutely that are allowing our students to holomu and succeed in higher education. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the Macau that we're throwing out there, <laughs> what Willie's trying to get at, and I think what we're all trying to um, get at is, is to, to support those best practices. Absolutely. Because, you know, with those best practices, we have the data that supports it. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know how long we'll be around. And we, we, it's important that, that that's supported and, and then and set in place, mm -hmm. um, and it and it can be done. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, one one thing that I didn't share in our conversation was that, you know, through the advocacy of um, Kualii Council uh, and with the president and board of regents, mm -hmm. Napuno El was able to get um, six positions funded. That's right. That's and right. that just goes to shows that when the planets are in alignment, when we're all on the same page, when we're all heading towards the same goal. Um, in, in in a long story short. Um, these kinds of things can happen to allow us to continue the efforts and the Absolutely. best practices that we're doing and hopefully set forth um, the trend for other upcoming services and programs mm -hmm. that are trying to do the same. I, I, you know, I'm a hollow for pointing that out. Um, and I think it's important that we do celebrate and kind of 
has, sometimes it's hard to be like, well, you know, we're really doing good work. You know, it's not <laughs> like we, we have to pat ourselves on the back, but when we support each other and kind of like help uplift each other's stories, it's really, really important. And I think it's not just us recognizing it. Um, I think nationally, internationally, folks um, are recognizing the good work that's happening here at in Hawaii and at the university. And I want to point out that actually Native Hawaiian Student Services just won an award at NASPA for um, their good work in um, supporting you know, indigenous students, in particular Native Hawaiian students. And so that's an award that's not our own. We're not, yeah. you know, that, that comes from outside, really looking in at the good work. So congratulations, but, and also to point out, you're right, um, there are some really great best practices <laughs> happening exactly. here that we want to make sure are here for the long term. Yeah, so yeah. with Ea Manoa and how that all worked out with the grant, that it almost that almost kind of came together by destiny too, where uh, we were where there was a need uh, with admissions um, to recruit for because of the the numbers going down in the in the UH campuses throughout the system actually, but specifically to Manoa, they wanted to bring in more students into the into the campus. Mm -hmm. So we said, okay, well let, let us let us help with the Hawaiians. Absolutely. With the Hawaiians. And it was almost by destiny. It was written as a grant, mm -hmm. um, but we were already kind of huddling together and kind of strategizing and, and trying to figure out okay, how can we um, broaden broaden the net so that we can bring in more Native Hawaiian student services from more different, um, I guess, diverse backgrounds, mm -hmm. and making sure that they're all supported. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's the the exciting thing about being a part of um, this collaboration with Willie and a number of us. Um, who are trying to to do this because um, I mean the, the 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 thing that I really like is we we get to sit together every now and then and just just share mana yeah. about okay, what do you think would look good or what do you think would yeah. what kind of a program would be good and I think that's where you get to synergize and really think about and getting to the core of what we feel is best for Native Hawaiians and sometimes we don't agree yeah and that's beautiful too but yeah. we don't what we don't do is we don't allow that to stump us from what got to get done mm -hmm. and that it will get done. Right. Um, but yeah. And I think that's what I, you know, what I hear. I remember my mentor in student services was um, Mehana Hines. Yeah. You know, and she always <laughs> talked about partnership, 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 which I know she got from Uncle David saying, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. And this idea, and I think that's, we're really at a time of celebration where we have all of these different entities on campus that we can partner with yeah, now. And good people in those entities. Absolutely. And diverse, like you're yeah, saying, diverse perspectives, people. you know, um, diverse experiences, diverse research backgrounds. Yeah. I mean, just the two of you, for example. And can come together, and we all know more diverse, more diversity at a table. We can get more answers, more solutions, more pathways, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think what's common to all of you, and I hear this, you know, and you're passionate, and I see it in your work, is this idea of Native Hawaiian student success, yeah, and then success in in general for our communities, yeah. So you can you can do all those kinds of things, and I think another thing that is so exciting and you know worth celebrating too is this idea about. Um, like for example, working with admissions. We didn't yeah. work with admissions no. 15 years ago. Yeah, right? that's huge. I mean, we didn't work with admissions five years ago, yeah. basically, right? And so this idea of really working across, you know, across the hall even, right? Across different units and departments, across vice chancellors yeah. to really um, grow opportunity. Yeah, right? and, 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 and allowing them to allow us, again, to use those practices that we know work best. Yeah. You know, yeah. and <clears throat> yeah. But I guess to what you had you had mentioned too, right? It's 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 the institution recognizing that Absolutely. it 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 might need you know what I mean to change, mm -hmm. and it might not always be the student that we have to focus on. So, right. um, you know, what I mean, being able to partner with admissions has has been great, and I think there's a a good working relationship there that will last way into the years, yeah. and. Um, I think a lot of Native Hawaiian students will will benefit from yeah. this. Yeah, yeah this it's a beautiful model. I think yeah. I think people, you know, across America can look to this model and think about well, how do we want to serve Indigenous students or minority students or whatever term is being used or a population, but really rethinking how we can integrate across across the hall, across the boundaries. Mm -hmm. um, I think is exciting. Um, Especially at a time when there's, you know, I mean, there's never been this much Native Hawaiians on this campus before. Right. There's never been this much Native Hawaiian faculty yeah. on this campus before. Um, and you know, I mean, in very diverse places. Mm -hmm. And I think overall, there is there is a commitment. Uh, I mean, amongst these different student services groups, amongst these different faculty and different academic units throughout mm -hmm. the university, to ensure um, 
they define success. Absolutely. Here at UH Manoa. Yeah. Which is, which is, I mean, exciting and very empowering. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you talked a little bit earlier about location, but I think it's important for people to know where are you located? Where are your spaces? You know, how can, um, how can we find you? Or, or where are the different spaces on campus? And so, Willie, you talked a little bit earlier about having two spaces on campus. Yeah, so we have, um, we have our, our, our main office in uh, the Student Services um, Building, mm -hmm. Queen Lilo Kalani. Um, uh, we're on the first floor there, um, room 104. And then our other, other office is, uh, is located at Hawaiian Studies. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and yeah, those are the, the kind of two primary spaces that we have for, like I had mentioned, uh, lounge areas, um, uh, computer lab, computer space, um, printing needs, tutoring. Yeah. We offer Hawaiian language mm -hmm. um, tutoring. Um, we have a scholar space, we have a library. Mm -hmm. um, students can go there for, for academic advising or, or just basic uh, They can counseling. heat up their food there. They can heat up their I've food. I've seen that very important thing. It's yeah. hard to find around campus. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then Kinohi, you folks are located where? We're on the fourth floor okay. of the Queen Ilu Ukulani um, Student Services Building. Mm -hmm. So we share space with um, Kuana with Kuumi Aloha Gomes, um, Talent Search with Paul Richards, and then soon uh, Pili Pono, a couple of their oh, staff, they're going to okay. be moving in. Um, but kind of same like Willie, it's it's another Pu'uhonua for our students. Mm -hmm. If they got to relax or talk story or um, study, or um, even with Napuno El, because we're so, I guess, been uh, blessed with um, having so much stuff. You know, like if, if our students, if we find our students need um, to make posters or Sub, or need to use the computer to do their projects, mm -hmm. or you know, just need little things like glue and scissors or <laughs> yeah. construction paper. They, they they know they know that they can stop by and just mm -hmm. help themselves and just let us know, you know, what you know, because they have access to that. Um, so kind of kind of same like what well, Willie folks, mm -hmm. yeah. And then summertime, I don't know if we can make that announcement or not, or if we should just hold off. But big big move. You know, he has all kind of exciting things. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we can. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, so. I don't know if you're fully there yet. Okay, well. But there yeah. are space ideas. Yeah, and, and conversations and going conversations on. Conversations going on about making the collaborations even tighter to right. what they're at now. Um, physically. Physically, yeah. yeah. Being in a, in a physical place and space to yeah. work even more closely. Um, right. So the idea of bringing together Native Hawaiian Student Services, Napu no Eau, and Kua Ana, mm -hmm. right, which are the, the three main. Native Hawaiian student support programs in yeah. the student services building, mm -hmm. bringing them under one roof, uh, well, that makes under sense. one office, within you one know, office. You know, a one-stop shop, right? Mm -hmm. um, a way for you folks to work closer together. And I know I've been, I mean, you just described an office with like a lot of different <laughs> programs in one space. And I've been to the, especially the um, Lili Kalani student space, and it's tight, Yeah. right? It's like, you guys are overflowing a little bit. It's hard to distinguish the, the faculty and staff right. workspace from the student yeah. lounge area. Yeah, no, it's amazing. It's like this amazing um, dance that I think you folks are doing, which um, I, I mean, as a former ac academic advisor, I know it's hard, especially when you're trying to do private counseling and you have students and you have to go find a space. Okay, let's go outside and talk story on the empty bench. Um, so I know space is an issue for yeah. sure. And this is. This is something that's that that's carried on. You know, I mean, long before I've Absolutely. I've got here. The mm -hmm. the outgoing director sat in a cubicle, which is my office. You, for, you sit in a cubicle. We sit. Yeah, yes. I sit in a cubicle, which yes. is. Um, uh, so I think the director of Native Hawaiian Student Services has been sitting in a cubicle for almost seven years yeah. now. I think. Yeah. Um, we have almost in the 2014 2015 um, academic years. In both of our spaces, we had almost 10,000 sign-ins, yeah. meaning that that much, I mean, traffic is is coming through our mm -hmm. um, our offices. This is only a 900 square foot area, right. right? And so, we can only fit so much student space and so much faculty space in there. Um, and so, the rest of our um, our colleagues, our faculty members, mm -hmm. our APT staff, are spread throughout different places, different offices yeah. throughout UH Manoa. And that's a, that's a common mo'olelo through yeah. a lot of the Native Hawaiian student servicing programs. Yeah. Napu Noel, in our humble beginnings when I first started, we were in one office, one room, <laughs> and there's three staff, three staff in there. Mm -hmm. 
all trying to make stuff <laughs> happen. Of course, we're grateful, um, but now we're slowly in a place of space where we're the, the university is seeing the, the importance of our work and how that means in, in physical space and deliverables on what we need to do yeah, for our, each of our programs for the betterment of our, of our students. Yeah, which I think is, um, you know, kind of brings me to my final question for the two of you in our few minutes left together. But, um, you know, I think I've heard so much today that is worth celebrating. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so, you know, we always have to take a moment to pause and celebrate because I think we don't do that enough. And yet we know there's still much, much work to do. Like Willie said, 15% um, is a great number compared to where we've been here at the university, but it's not where we want to be in the future, right? It's right. not where we should be. It's not where we, you know, we should be. Every All Native Hawaiian students that come through K-12 education should be at Mano if they want to choose this institution. Exactly. Um, and so just any maybe final thoughts that the two of you might have about where where you'd like to go, maybe what a goal is, um, a little um, elevator speech of a goal that um, each of you might have as you move your work forward? I think for our, our organization in short, it's part of our new strategic plan and kind of the voice of what we've been talking about today is that we just like to see um, more of the best practices of what we know works because now we're in from the 80s to the 90s to the now the 2000s of practices that we know that are successful for Native Hawaiian students. Mm -hmm. And I just like to see that adopted, you know, beyond our work. I like to see that in the DOE system. Absolutely. I like to see it in our, in our preschool education system, mm -hmm. which I know there are great people too that are yep. beginning to identify what that is, Absolutely. and they're they're, they're 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 making their contribution. Same for the DOE system, but mm -hmm. I just like to see a huge wave of of these practices being done so that we can assure the education and, and thus the career and communal success of our yep. people. Uh, with these practices that we know that work. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. mahalo. Willie? Um, I would probably just echo what I had said earlier about, mm -hmm. about I mean, the not just the university's um, stated commitment to, to, to transform this place into a Hawaiian-serving institution, mm -hmm. um, but really um, to, to, to really think strategically about bringing Native Hawaiians into the center of this university, yeah. not because it's the, the right thing to do or because it's the moral thing to do or mm -hmm. not necessarily just because we're trying to address these institutional barriers, but because I think the key to sustain life in these islands is Absolutely. is in that brain power that's, yeah. still, that's still out there. I bringing could, bringing that community more. into the University of Hawaii Manoa mm -hmm. will only enhance the future of, of Native Hawaiians, Hawaii's people, and Hawaii in general. Yeah, I agree, and I, it's so exciting to hear that um, um, that idea come to come to life so much. And I think I just want to show this last um, slide here of their contact information so that if people are interested in learning more about your programs, here's a slide we can um, contact you folks. Um, so thank you to the two of you so much for all of your work. Thank you for tuning in and we will have more Native Hawaiian programs um, highlighted in the upcoming months. So stay tuned. Mahalo.